Hey everyone, welcome to this uh, review of the mage cards from Knights of the Frozen Throne. Uh, quick disclaimer, uh, we're going to be reviewing these cards from 1 to 5 uh, in terms of playability, so how much we think they're actually going to see play. A good card could easily get rated low simply because there isn't a deck to support it. You know, a card might be good in a vacuum, but really we're talking about whether things are actually going to be playable in the context of the current Hearthstone meta and the meta going forward in Knights of the Frozen Throne. Obviously this is all done before the expansion, before we've had any chance to get our hands on the cards and actually play test them. So it's very much uh, theory, theory crafting and you know we could be very wrong but uh, we hope not based on our experience of the game thus far. So uh, with me I have Zemok and we are going to be doing Mage now. So as with all the classes we're going to start off with the Death Knight card. So the Death Knight is a hero card that repla um, replaces your hero. It's not really it's not a spell, uh, not a minion, a new type of card. Um, and it comes with five armor, as all the Death Knights do. And Frostlich Jaina here, she costs nine mana and comes with Battle Cry. Summon a 3 6 water elemental, and your elementals have lifesteal this game. So the effect that gives your elementals lifesteal is um, sort of a, a passive effect on your hero now, so it'll affect all elementals in the future, not just on the Battle Cry. And it also replaces your hero power with Icy Touch. Uh, a hero power that clearly touched Zemok there as he needed to go get a blanket. Uh, Icy Touch deals 1 damage, same as the normal hero power. However, if, it, if this kills a minion, summon a water elemental. So for every minion you're killing with your hero power, you're getting a 4-3 water elemental that freezes as well as having lifesteal now, thanks to Frostless Jaina's effect. So that seems like great value, right? We're just going to be pinging minions away for days, getting lots of water elementals. Must be a great card, right, Zemok? Uh, well, I'm not so sure about that because, I mean, in theory, the effect is quite strong. I mean, the idea that, you know, a two mana uh, summon a three, six elemental, one elemental with lifesteal, that, I mean, that sounds like a great effect. But the issue there is, you know, what deck does this go in? Like, wh where does this go? Does this fit an elemental mage? Because we saw with the last expansion, um, the uh, Journey to Angora, there, was a, there were a whole bunch of cards released to support this Elemental Mage fantasy, uh, and that's exactly what it was. It was a fantasy, because uh, nothing ever became of it. Elemental Mage was terrible, it didn't really see play, um, and we haven't seen anything released from this expansion. Uh, with the cards we're going to go over, you'll see that there aren't really any uh, that support Elemental Mage apart from Frost's Jaina, and uh, unfortunately, Frostless Jaina is not going to be the Lord and Savior that Elemental Mage needed. It just it does too little too late, um, unfortunately. A lot of the time, if you're playing a slow Mage deck, you'd rather just uh, end the game with a bunch of Burn Spells, Fireballs, Frostbolts, uh, Pyroblasts, etc. Maybe setting up with an Annex Trouser before, like the uh, classic Freeze Mage has done so. Uh, and I think that's going to be the main issue going into the new meta. It just yeah. doesn't have a place. And even though the hero power seems all... Um, Rosie getting 4-3, you know, you think of it as summoning a 3-6 f uh, frost element or water elemental, you know, with lifesteal. It's, it's really not, because if you think about it, how often late in the game are you really actually killing minions with that hero power? It's really only earlier in the game that it is actually managing to be the final blow. Very often you're going to be trading minions into their minions, uh, you know, as a way, or using your removal spells, and... I'd say not very often does that actually result in the hero power sort of fitting in there to actually get the kill. And you have to actually get the kill with this Icy Touch in order to uh, actually summon the elementals. So I think the one interesting thing is it does offer a lifesteal engine for Mage. It's a way that Mage can recover after an ice block with, you know, previously we saw that with Reno in the sort of Reno Mage decks. But now Frost's Jaina does offer you a way. It's just a very slow way to do it. Right, uh, and that could be a reason that Frostless Jaina maybe sees play if things slow down enough. But as you say, ultimately, why would you play Frostless Jaina over any other kind of finisher? Over just going for Alexstrasza into Pyroblast and Burn, or uh, Antonidas to get a bunch of fireballs and f kill your opponent, right? Surviving is not as good as killing your opponent, and uh, ultimately, I think Mage in the late game would prefer just to kill their opponents then get this uh, value engine that Frostlich Jaina could be. So for me, I'm going to give Frostlich Jaina 
a one. I think also a big thing is that Frostachena doesn't actually have any effect when she hits the board. If she was maybe a bit cheaper or had some kind of bigger effect other than just giving you a water elemental, I, I, I think maybe she could have been a two, but that's not really saying much. You know, the difference between one and two is relatively minimal here. So I think Frost's Chain is only a one for me, sadly. For me, I'm also going to give uh, Frost's Chain a one, and it's going to really just come down to that, you know, why play this when you can play other things such as burn spells? And uh, that same issue... Uh, kind of comes to the next card that we're going to talk about, which is Cindergosa, which is the new mage legendary for the set. Yeah, uh, yes. so Cindergosa is an 8-mana 8-8 dragon with battle cry summon two zero one one frozen champions. So the frozen champions uh, have a death rattle that adds a random legendary to your hand. So essentially Cindergosa is coming with two delayed <laughs> random legendaries to your mm -hmm. hand. And uh, we kind of discussed this when uh, Pandemonium and I were doing the Warrior review. Random legendaries are not very good, and they have not gotten any better, really, with this set. At least with this, you do have the benefit of sometimes being able to play them. And sometimes random legendaries can be a little bit better when they're played rather than summoned, uh, as some of them tend to have, you know, battle cry effects or something like that. But ultimately, Cindergosa is basically just an 8-8 for 8. The, the two cards you draw only really affect really, really slow games. And in those games, you know, why would you not just use the Burnouts or even something like Medivh uh, for value, right? The RTS weapon kind of tends to be better alongside things like Phylon's Portal and Pyroblast and whatnot to actually get minions on the board rather than just adding these random uh, legendaries to your hand. The only time that Cindergrosa does suddenly become playable is when... Uh, the meta becomes very healy. Uh, that's a terrible term. But, uh, I mean, we are seeing a lot of lifesteal cards added. Uh, a lot of classes are going to have access to heal. And if the meta is very... Ha does have a lot of cards with a lot of heal in them, um, you know, burning out your opponent with something like Alex Strauss followed by Spills isn't actually going to be a reliable game plan. And we could see Cindergrosa. Frost is Chena. We'll still not see play. But Cindergrosa, maybe. Uh, look, it's yeah. a decent card. It's not It's not a bad card. That's something to remember. It's an 8-mana 8-8. Eight eight like that's a that's a body it has to be dealt with and the uh legendaries you get as you were saying on uh, if you can actually play them it's a lot better than just randomly summoning them so they could be quite good um it's might not be the best drop you know maybe your sarah is better maybe just lich king is better lich king probably is better but um you know it's still a consideration and for that i'm willing to give it a two star uh, just in that off chance that maybe maybe the meta just becomes a bit too much for the for the burn mage to handle yeah, I think it is important to differentiate that it does have a lot more, honestly, value and uh, sort of value in the short term, at least, rather than like some super long um, dreamland like Frostlich Jaina. So Cindergosa does have better value there and really can, you know, have more impact when you need that co uh, persistent minion damage, you know, repetitive minion damage to actually get through a bunch of healing, as you're speaking about. So, yep, two, so, uh, two for Cindergosa seems about fair. Uh, and next we have Glacial Mysteries. Glacial Mysteries is an eight mana epic spell. So, that must do a lot, right? But Glacial Mysteries puts one secret of, put one of each secret from your deck into the battlefield. So it's it's just like Mr. Challenger, right? Yeah, except, you know, it's, it's eight bad. mana, <laughs> and it doesn't come with the body. And whilst... And the mage secrets don't actually do much. Yeah, whilst mage sec Well, no, I mean, arguably mage secrets are better than paladin secrets, right? But they, They're easier to pair on. Yeah, but they also don't... Synerg sometimes they can be anti-synergistic yes. rather than synergistic with each other. Uh, and that's a, a big issue. Also, the fact is... With Glacial Mysteries, you have to put multiple secrets in your deck, different secrets, right? And then if you're drawing them, it's really clunky. And, like, Glacial Mysteries on 8, what, you're playing this in a secret mage? Like, chances are you may be getting 2 or 3 secrets from it. You don't even get a body in the bad case scenarios where you're getting minimal secrets, unlike Mysterious Challenger, which worst case scenario is a 6-6 six, six for 6. You know, not something you'd actively put in your deck, but... The floor for Glacial Mysteries is just a lot lower than it was for Mysterial, Mysterious Challenger, for example. Yeah, definitely a one for me. And it's also just that thing of, um, you know, 
when you're playing a bunch of mage secrets, they're three mana. So if you draw them, they're a bit clunky. Paladin secrets are a lot easier to get off. You know, if you draw a paladin secret, it's one mana. It's relatively easy to play. And as you were mentioning, the anti-synergy, uh, you know, if you have a polymorph up and a, and a mirror entity up, it's just going to polymorph and then mirror entity. Um, and another thing is that mage secrets are very easy to play around. You know, counter spell, okay. If you think it's counter spell, you play a coin first. If you think it's a uh, potion of polymorph, you play like a one mana, you know, one drop first. If you think it's a mirror entity, you play a one drop first. If you think it's the new mage secret, which you're going to get to just now, you play, you know, you play something small, you play something cheap that you don't really mind your opponent getting or your opponent dealing with easily. So it's very easy to play around, very clunky. If you draw the cards and at eight mana, you're getting a bunch of secrets that probably won't be doing much and uh, nobody. It's just, I think, overall a bad card. Yeah, I mean, there's the dream where you can play Glacial Mysteries and you can play a double Cabal Crystal Runner, right? Because no, it doesn't work. Doesn't it work? Does it not nope. reduce? Because you didn't uh, play them. Yes. Wow, that's, that's even worse. Uh, even that Dreamland scenario that wasn't very good is not a thing. So, yeah, Glacial Mysteries, a solid one, almost a zero, to be quite honest. I think it's just a terrible card. Um, and moving swiftly on, we have a far more interesting card in Simulcrum. Simulacrum? Simulacrum, that one. Uh, it is a three mana spell. It is not a Ep secret. <laughs> it is an epic. And it reads, copy the lowest cost minion in your hand. So this gives you a copy in your hand. And, you know, of whatever the lowest cost. If you have a babbling book in your hand, it gives you a babbling book. If you have... So I'll be uh, back in a second. I do want to talk about this card, but I must just jump away for two seconds. Sure. If you have a Sources Apprentice and a Babbling Book, it's going to copy the Babbling Book. If you have Sources Apprentice and Cindergosa, it's going to copy Sources Apprentice. So the big thing here is that you want to have either only higher value minions you may, you know, uh, that are in your hand when you use Simulcrim, because then you're kind of drawing a decent card. Otherwise, three mana to draw... Uh, like a three cost card is maybe not something you really want to play. Alternatively, Simulcrim, there, are, there is some synergy there with something like Arcane Giant. Uh, if you can play a bunch of spells to reduce Arcane Giant, then all of a sudden Simulcrim gives you another Arcane Giant in your hand and also further reduces your other Arcane Giants. So there's some synergy there and there's also possibly synergy with the uh, other kind of, you know, quest uh, mage we see. Uh, you know, it gives Simulcrim kind of is an extra sources apprentice in the late game when you're trying to uh, use your combo. Let's say sources apprentice is the bottom card of your deck. Well, you can play Simulcrim and copy your existing sources apprentice in your hand, and then you can go off the next turn with the combo if you have all the necessary ingredients. You know, for the ex the Exodia Mage combo with the sources apprentice and. Uh, Archmage Antonidas. So, ultimately, Simulcrum has some interesting possibilities, but it's not something we're going to see in the vast majority of mage decks, and it's not something that is something mages are going to be too excited to see. It's something we're mostly going to see coming out of Primordial Glyphs. Certainly. Uh, I think you've pretty much covered everything to say. Uh, we're going to touch on the uh, quest mage deck that I made for, this, for the mage uh, section of the review, and it has two of the hardest <laughs> to pronounce cards in the set Simulacrum. In Simulacrum, that there thing. Go. Good. Which I, but I wouldn't have been able to say it if you hadn't told me. Anyways, yeah. uh, so uh, it has those in kind of just because you want to use it on the Sorcerer Apprentice, as you are saying, if they're bottom cards in the deck. And maybe even Doomsayers, you know, get an, get an extra few Doomsayers. Uh, but other than that, it's not a very good card. Um, yeah, so it's a two-star for me. Okay, I'm going to give it a three because I think it has application. But honestly, it is more like a three leaning towards a two because even in the decks where it has application, it might just get cut because it's not necessarily good enough in those decks even. Uh, and that's the major downside there for Simulcrum. You're not really doing enough. Like, if you're just trying to get the Arcane, the, the Sources Apprentice from your deck, just playing Arcane Intellect is very often better, right? For the combo, for example. Uh, it's only for scenarios, I think, where you really want to get like extra Arcane Giants that it works. But we'll... Uh, return to some of its uses a bit later. Ultimately, probably not a card we're going to see very much uh, naturally in mage decks. But thanks to Primordial Glyph, we'll probably see it occasionally. Uh, next, we have Ghastly Conjurer. Ghastly Conjurer is a 4 mana, 2 6 uh, rare minion, and it has Battle Cry at a Mirror Image spell to hand. So, Mirror Image, the 1 mana spell that summons 2 0 2 uh, Mirror Images. So, what is. Nothing. Yeah. Well, what is there really to say about this? Yeah, I mean, 
look, they they remove cards like Flame Waker. You know, they remove Flame Waker, and now we have Frost, uh, Demented Frost Caller, and that's pretty much it. That's like the synergize with um, Antonidas. Archmage Antonidas, but there's just better cards to play than this in a deck with Antonidas. Uh, the card doesn't really do much. It only adds one mirror image, and the mirror image isn't going to do much. Other people would play mirror image, which they don't. Um, I yeah. just the cards pretty bad. Yeah, so, largely its stats are just not interesting enough. Uh, the mirror image is not really worth it. Uh, even for an Antonidas, you'd rather probably play something like Burgly Bully sometimes, which even though it's yeah. not going to always give you a coin, it is always a four ma a five mana four six, which is simply just a lot better than Ghastly Conjurer. So Ghastly Conjurer is going to be a one for me. Me too. Okay, uh, next. Next, we have Doomed Apprentice. Do you want to tell the viewers a bit about Doomed Apprentice? Well, I mean, there's not much to say. <laughs> uh, Doomed Apprentice is a 3-mana three 3-2 three rare minion. And the text on the uh, minion reads, Your opponent's spells cost one more. And my main issue with the card is it's it's like that... Um, it's kind of like the... Is it not Mana Addict? Uh, mana Wraith. It's kind of like the Mana Wraith effect, but on a 3-mana Mage minion. And it's for spells. Um, see the the main issue with this uh, with the card is that it's you know it's a three two it's very easily dealt with um, and like when when do you want to play this do you want to play this before you're expecting a big combo because if you do uh, I would just prefer to play the new neutral that we're getting for the set I forget the name but it's a six mana five five and it's your opponent's boss cost cost two more so it's well, much more effective at doing its job. So the, the difference is the neutral is all spells cost two more so it okay, but, your spells but even as well. then. But yes, even then, even you'd then rather play that. if you're trying to stop a combo, yeah. yeah. I think like I mean, Do Doomed Apprentice, the idea here is that you're supposed to get a head on board, play it to try and protect your board a little bit, right? Delay their AOE a turn or something like that. But you have to be a head on board for Doomed Apprentice to be of any value. Otherwise, it's just going to get traded into really easily as a 3-mana three 3-2 three is just not very strong. And there's so many ways to deal with that. Even just weapons, you know, a lot of weapons deal with that very well. And Doomed Apprentice doesn't really interact with weapons at all. So, yeah, ultimately, I agree. Doomed Apprentice seems uh, a bit doomed to failure and not something we're going to see very often. Uh, obviously, the flavor is it's like a turned Sorcerer's Apprentice, right? So it does the bad version of the Sorcerer's Apprentice for your opponent. And at two mana for a 3-2 that did that, it would probably be too good. But, you know... They, for flavor, they try to keep a similar effect, but ultimately 3 mana, 3-2, three, it's probably not good enough. Yeah. One so, spell. Yeah, uh, it's a 1 for me as well. Uh, bordering on sometimes maybe a 2 in the right deck, but I don't think the right deck exists. And Maybe in the future, maybe, maybe. I think it has more potential than Ghastly Conjurer, but ultimately is a no. A big no with a 1 for me. Uh, and next we have Ice Walker. So we were talking about that cool elemental synergy for Mage, right? Well, here is some of the elemental synergy. We have Ice Walker, a two mana, one three, elemental. Uh, it is a rare and it reads your hero power also freezes the target. Okay, so... Good. Good. Yeah, that's uh, not really that interesting. Sure, your hero power freezing the target is good, but you have to play a 2 mana 1-3, so now you're, you, then you're supposed to what? Use your hero power to freeze things to try and get ahead on board, but you're behind on board because you played a 1-3, and you're also using your hero power every turn. This was out on board, so then you're getting further behind on board because you're using less mana to develop on the board, and it just kind of stalls things and things spiral out of control. Sure, being able to lock down some minions is powerful in like a late game value, scenario but ultimate ultimately ice walker really just you know i think that's uh, gonna be put on ice for a while not really something we're gonna see uh that sees much competitive play it's, it's gonna be a one for me i don't know if you have anything else to say on it yeah no, it's not a it's not a very good card it's if if it was in another class that had the mage hero power in a different class that no even then it would still struggle to see play yeah. So, I just, I don't see... What do you do? You want to play this on 2 and then, like, freeze a 3 drop. That's great. But, I mean, it's just a 1-3. It's not even like your hero power freezes the target for the rest of the game. This yeah, has exactly. to survive. It's just bad. You have it's to a... use your hero power every turn to stop the thing from attacking. I don't know I don't know what this, what the, what's going on with this freeze thing. With I, I know Mage has, like, got the whole, like, fire and ice vibe going on. But then, like, it just doesn't work. The next card is a 3-mana uh, 3-4... Uh, common minion called Cold Wraith, 
and the battle cry is, if an enemy minion is frozen, draw a card. Now, initially you're like, okay, it's a 3 minute 3-4, three, that probably draws a card. No, you're wrong. Because what do you have to do? You have to freeze the minion on 3, and then you play this on... I mean, th freeze the minion on 2, and then play this on 3. That's the only... That's the only time you're drawing a card, right? But then, their minion will be unfrozen by the time your turn comes around. So actually, you're not... You, you can never play this on 3, pretty much, unless you play freezing potion in the same turn. So this is almost always a... Uh, four, turn 4 or higher card. And on turn 4 or higher, you don't really want to be playing a 3-mana three 3-4 three, that draws a card uh, inconsistently. You'd rather just be playing a maybe a slightly worse card. Like, I would sooner play um, No Mission Inventor than play this in my deck if I wanted that draw engine. Because it's uh, it's just one card. It does the effect every single time, and I can consistently rely on Not that I want to play No Mission Inventor, but it's better than Cold Wraith, in my opinion, for the draw card effect. There are some really good curve scenarios that involve one of the other cards we're going to be discussing next. But ultimately, I think Cold Wraith is... It's okay because at least at its base it's statted correct or statted well, right? We talked about Doomed Apprentice, Ghastly Conjurer, Ice Walker. They're all understated for their cost and their effects are not worth it. You know, Cold Wraith, worst case scenario, is a 3-mana three 3-4. Three, well, that's actually kind of okay at the moment. There's a lot of 3-mana three 3-3s. Three There's actually not that many ways that deal 4 damage to it that are, are really neat except, you know, 4-cost cards. So, in that way, it kind of trades with a 4-cost card. But ultimately, I'm not particularly excited about playing a 3-mana three 3-4 three, in my deck. And I would need to see really good synergy. So, you, you were saying, like, oh, you're Freezing Potion and then Cold Wraith. But then you've used a card to draw a card. All you did was cycle Freezing Potion to freeze something for a turn, which is not particularly good. And you had to hold Freezing Potion and then only specifically use it on that turn. Like, I think later in the game, when you top deck Cold Wraith and you have to use a Frost Bolt that turn or Breath of Syndergosa or, some, or a Frost Nova or something like that in the same turn, then Cold Wraith gets you some value. But on three, it's pretty much just a three, four, uh, which is not terrible, but probably not good enough. And I think it's going to get two, uh, a two rating for me. No, yeah. I'm good. No, I don't think it's good enough for two. I think it's a one. I'm for just me. saying, like, it's two because it's just not as horrible as the other three cards we just went over, really. I don't, and I, I struggle to give it a one. On a playability standpoint, which is how I'm doing this, it's like, oh, I thought, how are we doing? Yeah, yeah, it is. But, like, but two mean, two is, like, maybe, no, two is, like, still pretty unplayable, right? I guess. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, three is, like, maybe it sees play sometimes, you know, um, in, in like fringe or specific decks like Stormwalker maybe whereas like 4 is you know it sees play mo most of the time in most of the, the decks of the like the the class okay. in these cases and 5 it's like Primordial Glyph right it's in every mage deck kind of thing so yeah Cold Wraith uh, a 2 for me I think uh, and then speaking of freezing we have Breath of Syndragosa so oh. No, I, 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 yeah, I was avoiding the pun there. Anyway, uh, we have Breath of Cinder Ghost. So this is kind of the card that, you know, I was talking about in the dream scenario for Cold Wraith. And you might ask yourself why. Well, Breath of Cinder Ghost is a one mana spell for Mage. It's a common. And it reads, deal two damage to a random enemy minion and freeze it. So your dream scenario is Mana Worm into Sorcerer's Apprentice. And then you play like Breath of Cinder Ghost plus Cold Wraith on three or something like that, right? You know, the... The idea is that if you can play this for zero with a Sources of Apprentice on the board, it's really good. And I think Breath of Syndragosa is not too bad in a lot of tempo decks. Uh, I think it's better than Cold Wraith, and uh, it is something that Cold Wraith benefits from it, whereas it doesn't really care about Cold Wraith so much. Um, the fact that it's random hurts it a bit, but at one mana deal two damage and freeze a minion, it would have been way too strong, I think. Uh, so... Ultimately, I think Breath of Syndragosa is kind of okay, but I don't really think there is a deck for it. That's the biggest issue, right? I don't think your Tempo Mages at the moment, which are kind of like Secret Mages, those are the closest we have to Tempo Mages at the moment, I don't think they really have space for it. You don't really want to play it the same turn you play Antonidas, then its effect is not that useful. It's definitely an effect you want to play earlier. And, you know, it's an effect that screams you want to play it with uh, Flame Waker, so... Uh, Flame Waker is gone, and so that's not really going to be uh, an option, so, yeah. I mean, uh, I want to give it a 3 because it's a very powerful effect, but just based on playability, it's definitely a, a 1 or a 2. 
I don't know. Like I, I think I think it is a, a three because it could see play in some of the uh, a very tempo oriented secret mage or something like that. But ultimately, I agree. It's probably going to get cut from those lists as well. Like we were saying, you know, Simulacrum, uh, Simulacrum is also going to get cut probably from some of the other the combo decks that are involved. And lastly, we have the mage secret for this expansion. We have Frozen Clone. This is a three mana secret, of course. And it is a common, and it reads, uh, after your opponent plays a minion, add two copies of it to your hand. So, uh, Can I talk about it? Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, it's pretty uh, easy to explain why this card is bad. Um, you see, w when there's so many secrets in the game like that, that have this effect that rely on when your opponent plays a minion, uh, we already have Potion of Polymorph, we already have um, Mirror Entity, and now we're getting Frozen Clone. They all kind of have this thing of when your opponent plays a minion. What this means is that uh, if your opponent ever expects it to be this kind of secret, um, a minion, uh, a secret that affects minions, they're going to play on all three at the same time. Then they're just going to play a bad minion. Uh, and I touched on this earlier when we were talking about um, the eight mana spell. Um, so it's very easy to play around. Uh, and that means that when you are getting two copies of whatever it is, uh, you're just getting probably just going to get a bad card um, and it's just going to fill up your hand and it's not really going to have much impact um, and a lot of time you're not going to actually want that and it's just going to be better to play Mirror Entity most of the time instead um, and that's that's just I mean in short what the issue with the card is yeah so even in the best case scenario where you do get a good card from them having to play it most of the time, as you say, it would just be better to have Mirror Entity because then you'd at least have the minion on the board and you'd have the first initiative with that minion to actually, you know, attack in to trade at like the best case scenario. A lot of the times, the best case scenario for Mirror Entity is that you can trade with the minion, right? Or that you have a spell to remove the minion and then you are ahead on board. Whereas Frozen Clone is never getting you ahead on board. It's only really for some kind of value-oriented mage in this crazy value control meta which is uh, definitely not something I think we're particularly likely to see so I'm pretty low on frozen clone I think it's uh, a one pretty much and as you said it does really get hurt by the fact that playing around the other mage secrets that interact with minions simultaneously plays around frozen frozen clone yeah it's also one for me cool and then we have our mage decks for this review so, honestly, when we were doing these decks, we were kind of like, well, there's not really much. I mean, you saw, based on our ratings, we're not really excited about much here. There isn't really much that's going to change. A lot of that, like, I tried building a tempo mage with, you know, the Breast of Cinderghost and stuff, and it basically just turned into a secret mage. And that was largely because um, you really, a great tempo card is Medivh's Valet at the moment. And for that, you want the secrets, you want the Archonologists. And then you also want to be able to play them for free. So basically it just turns into Secret Mage. Uh, you know, with the Kirin Tor Mages and, and there's a, the Cabal Crystal Runners. And ah, you can see where that goes. It's basically just turning into uh, Secret Mage. So the other kind of alternatives we came up with and uh, are this Elemental Mage, first off. And this is, first off, a bad deck. Uh, it's kind of more to highlight a lot of the Elemental Mage problems, I think. Uh, we have a sort of tempo oriented almost but then we have you know archaeologist into ice barrier ice block kind of thing uh, we have servant of kalimos for some extra value and we have frostless jaina you know as a way of hopefully recovering the board or recovering if you fall behind and lose a lot of hp you know before you try and get some value from your flame strike or use your flame caller to remove and stuff like that i mean sorry blaze caller i mean blaze oh. caller is really the like the tempo payoff for the mage plan right yeah, you missed um, Fireflies. No, I didn't. I had Fireflies in and had to take them out. And did you cut the, uh, the Flame Geyser? really there. space. Uh, I, I didn't put Flame Geyser in, no. Because I basically had Steam Surger as a way of getting both the Flame Elementals and the, um, the uh, Flame Geyser. That's elemental kind of... mage is so bad though. Like, okay, yeah, exactly, so what do you exactly. play on three? You play igneous elemental or tar creeper in order to trigger your steam surger. Okay, so no, you play steam surger. What I, do you get? You get a 
you get a crappy two mana spell that doesn't do much. Like <laughs> yeah, the payoffs of four elemental mage are just so low. I mean, like, and the the way you curve is so slim here. You know, it's Tar Creeper into Steam Surger into Servant of Kalimos, but that's a very specific curve. And then you need to use that two mana spell at some point to get the one, uh, the Flame Elemental. So basically, on six, then you want to use the spell, play the Flame Elemental, and then you can activate Blaze Caller on seven. You know, it just doesn't curve nicely. It it really doesn't flow very well as a, a deck like that. The other alternative, of course, is on six is to play your second version of Pyros. You know, that is a six mana elemental. Uh, but ultimately, it really just doesn't seem like this is better than Secret Mage. It doesn't seem like it's better than, you know, some of the Burn Mages that we see, Freeze Mage. Like, Mage is in a relatively decent position, and I, I really don't think that this elemental mage has actually gained much from this expansion. Um, you know, Breath of Cinderghosa helps sometimes in the sort of uh, tempo, from a tempo perspective, but... You know, Frosted Chainer really just doesn't really do much. It, it adds a little bit value to the Mage deck, but ultimately not enough to really say that, you know, this deck is going to be a viable deck um, in this expansion. Uh, and then we have your Mage deck. Do you want to talk us through this Mage deck a bit? Uh, sure. So the Mage deck that I came up with is a Quest Mage. Once again, I kind of went through the motions of Okay, how can I come up with a fun new mage card? So I started with a uh, mage deck. So I started with looking at all the Knights of the Frozen Throne mage cards. I uh, went through all the mage cards, went through all the neutrals, and I was like, okay, well, you know, kind of the same thing that you did. There's not actually much that we can play with, right? We just reviewed the mage cards, and we saw that there's not that much that we're excited to, uh, I mean, to use. Yeah, use. there was literally no cards that were like three or there was two cards that were three and everything else was two or below so that kind of immediately tells you why we have so few decks here it's just doesn't look like a good expansion for mage yeah i mean we could talk about freeze mage and why we think it'll still be good or we could talk about burn mage and why we think it'll make a comeback or we talk about secret mage and why it's good but no that's boring uh what i've just said is probably somewhat true um anyways this is the deck that i came up with it's very, very similar to old school quest mage. I mean, I say old school, but I just mean like Journey to Ngoro, like release day quest mage. Um, so it's got open the way gate, of course, which is the quest. Uh, one babbling book. And then so the way you're completing the quest is just with the one babbling book, the two primordial glyphs and the uh, double Kabbalist term. So uh, it's, very, it's very slow to complete the quest. Yes. But then uh, and we have... I mean, I, when I was initially playing this, because I played quite a bit of quest mage, I, I mean, I was always playing just that kind of... Uh, engine to complete the quest um but then usually i'd play a lot of draw so i'd play you know uh cold light oracles and uh loot orders and novice engineers in this build we just see the uh two novice engineers and the thalnos i mean and the arcane intellects of course are going to be there uh the idea behind that is you have the two um simulacrum simulacrums yeah those things simulacrums now there are many things you can use the simulacrums on uh, you don't even need to draw as many cards because you can simulacrum your Sources Apprentices. You can simulacrum your um, Novice Engineers if you want to draw more cards. Uh, you can simulacrum your Doomsayers. You can simulacrum your uh, Blood Mage Thalnos. You don't really want to simulacrum the uh, Archonologist. You can even simulacrum the Babbling Book. Jeez, this is a real tongue twister. <laughs> um, if you're just missing that one card to complete the quest. Uh, and so obviously you've got the normal quest way of winning the game, which is just your... Uh, you know, play all your Sorcerer's Apprentices, play your quest, play Antonidas, and then just win through infinite damage. Now, yeah, the cool thing about this deck... Uh, yeah, with the Molten Reflection, sorry, of course. The cool <laughs> thing about this deck, which I like, actually, uh, why I am actually excited to play this deck again, is the... Uh, I feel like the Double Arcane Giants with the Simulacrums uh, kind of supports the uh, the quest in a way, and you don't even need the Alex Strauss anymore. So now you can maybe Simulacrum one of your Arcane Giants when it gets really low, like to one mana or zero mana, uh, and then you can just play three Arcane Giants, you know, uh, play Open the Waygate. I mean, uh, Time Warp, Time Warp, play Time Warp, and then just win the game off the back of that. So there's, there's more than one win condition now, which is very cool, and there's space for it, which I like a lot. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to play this deck. I'm not really excited to play too much Mage, uh, or there's no really new deck, new Mage decks that I'm excited to play, but this is definitely one. I mean, the big question is, why do you need the Arcane Giants when most of the time, if you've drawn enough cards to make the arcane giants free which is what you want or cheap enough you know one mana or whatever then 
you're probably gonna just be able to play the combo a lot of that time, right? It's only if your bottom card is like Source of the Apprentice, or if your bottom card is Molten Reflection, or your bottom card is Antonidas. Um, yeah. And even it's even it's as you said, if your bottom card is Source of the Apprentice, very often you can get it with simul uh, Simulacrum. So the Arcane Giants to me, like, it seem a little bit unnecessary. I, I feel like you could probably have uh, more defensive cards. Uh, to actually be better against aggro decks a lot of the time. But then we're basically just going back to a, an old version of yeah. Quest Mage, right? Look, That's... I could have just recreated Quest Mage. I mean, like, I think the list with double uh, Bluegill, not Bluegill, um, Gold Light Oracle. Gold Light Oracle is the best list because I do. Um, and then one Simulacrum, maybe. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if Simulacrum makes the best list. Yeah. I really don't think it does. I mean, that's kind of the the point we made about the card, right? And why we were rating it sort yeah. of, you know, uh, between two and three, kind of more on the two side, I suppose, is that even in the list where we can see the combo potential for it, it's probably not good enough. It's kind of like having an extra source of printers in hand, given that you don't have any of the other two cost things in hand, uh, you know. So, yeah, ultimately... Uh, mage is probably just going to be on the same archetypes we've seen in Johnny Tonguro, Freeze Mage, Burn Mage, the hybrids, all the hybrids in between there, and of course the Secret Mage. I'm, I, I'll be interested to see if anyone can sort of finally push Secret Mage into more of a tempo-oriented and less secret-heavy list, but I don't really foresee that. Having tried to build it myself, it kind of just seems like Secret Mage at this point is better with the, the synergies it has on offer for it compared to... Uh, more traditional tempo mage. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, it's not, it's not going anywhere. That's for sure. Yeah. So overall on mage, where do you think they're gonna sit in the sort of overall meta come Knights of the Frozen Throne? Uh, I'm gonna say mage will still be tier one. I think. Uh, I think that there is enough mage going on to. To keep Mage at the bottom of tier one, if like if that low, but I think Mage will definitely still be tier one uh, yeah, going into yeah. the new expansion. I think the biggest thing that could hurt Mage, as you mentioned, is the Life Steal. Uh, life Steal being a lot more popular, just more class having access to healing could definitely hurt their burn plans. But even then, you know they they do have more temporary plans, and Mage is not really so one dimensional that just a bunch of heal added to the game is really going to make the class unplayable. So, yep, Mage st should still be in a pretty decent position going forward, but that's no real thanks to any of the new cards that we're seeing. So, yeah, uh, maybe you disagree with us. Maybe you want, like, you know, think Glacial Mysteries is the new Mysterious Challenger and we're just wrong. You can put that in the comments. Uh, you can joke. put whatever you want in the comments. Uh, you know, except mean things. Don't say mean things, please. Please, YouTube. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, you can tweet at us uh, at ZemokHS and at Div underscore gaming. Um, or Zemok underscore HS. Yeah, Zemok underscore HS. I mean, it's there. I was pointing to it. So, anyway. Um, Maybe he's listening. Yeah, so, yeah, let us know what you think. Let us know if you have any differing opinions on anything to do with Mage. Um, or let us know if, you know, you're a big Syndragosa fan, like, a uh, a particular friend of ours that thinks it's going to be a good card. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, let us know and please like, subscribe, follow, uh, do all those things, uh, help the channel grow uh, and help, you know, us gain visibility. Thanks a lot. Cheerio. Cheers, guys.